Hello, Dr. Noob here again. So today I would like to talk with you about the sprite sheets, to be more specifically character sprite sheets. Uh, sometimes you got difficulties when you buy assets from the asset store or some artists give you some sprite sheets and you cannot really make them run on the Corgi engine. Uh, I try to narrow it down into three rules you should keep. So if you are working with an artist, you can just point him to this tutorial and tell him please deliver that following the rules. So here they are. So first of all, let me tell you that I'm using a sprite. I know that not everybody has a sprite. Um, it's something you need to pay for. I know there are some tools which are almost the same. And if I'm not mistaken, you are also able to compile it in your computer and then it's for free. Anyhow, that's the tool I'm using. I hope that's okay for you. Uh, to be fair, I have to say that Lugual has sent me the sprite sheets in a very good shape. I have really nothing to complain here besides that I had manually to destroy them to make this tutorial. Okay, let's import it. If you go here under file, you can import the sprite sheet. Uh, here you can select the manually destroyed uh, sprite sheet and here you see you need to make it as big, as small as you need it to be. So we have one, two, three, four, so you need to go as wide as here. So now we have one, two, three, four and we can import it. Let's fix the first error. The first error is you need to think about this sprite sheet that you will have in your game with a collision box. So I think this would be the collision box, right? So you program it to have it exactly in this position. The moment that you change now here the frame, your collision box would be here. And the artist has, well, because he's an artist, he has maybe put that up like it's a jump, which looks more naturally. But in our case, we don't use it that way. So we need to have it on the same um, level. So best is you take that and you move it, let's say, in such a corner. And you go to the second frame and move it to the same corner. You go now to the third one and you move it to the same corner as well as the fourth one. So now it looks a little bit weird because it doesn't really look like a jump animation for us because everything is in the same level. But because we are moving it with the Corgi engine, it's okay. And just to be, make sure, you can maybe have here a little fake collision box and see if it would work with the jump animation. And yes, it would work. Very well. So this is error number one, or rule better said. Rule number one. Make it on the same level. Good. Rule number two is the sprite needs to be symmetric or better said the collider box needs to be in the middle it needs to be symmetric uh, in our case you see that this is not right in the middle of the sprite and the issue is when you create the box collider you can narrow it down as you wish but there is one small thing the Corgi engine complains if the X value is not zero. So the moment you want to move that in here, then you will have an issue because it's not zero. It's minus 0 0.03. And if you start to play, I think you will get, you see here, the X offset is not set to zero. Okay. 
let's look at it in the A sprite. So here under A sprite, um, well, there are different ways how to solve it. I personally use the C button here, like C like canvas, and I can make it a little bit smaller. It's way too much anyway. So uh, that helps me because now I know that this middle line well, is the middle. So I can now move it uh, so that I can, let's say, make it this way, this way. Okay. So now I need to think about where my collision box should be. Maybe I want to make it exactly like that. Or maybe I want to take the arm and a little bit of the nose with it. So anyhow, you see that's exactly in the middle. And this is rule number two. Let's make it symmetric. So rule number three, for that I go again here to show you that. You see this is at the moment the um, image size. And if the image size is that big, you will have trouble if you're using like teleporter or anything like that because he takes the image size. So rule number three is make it as narrow as possible. This is one of the easiest one because uh, in a sprite I showed you already when you go here to C, click on C, uh, you can, let's say, take minus minus five and here minus five and narrow it down until you see you have it. This is one of the easiest one because uh, in a sprite I showed you already when you go here to C, click on C, uh, you can, let's say, take minus minus five and here minus five and narrow it down until you see you have it 12 and 11. So 11 and 11, because you all have already pointed that here in the middle, you should have left and right the same size uh, cut down. So now if I go and play in here, make sure that you are not losing any pixels. If yes, that's no problem with a sprite. Let's say for some reason I have made it a little bit too much and I see, oh man, that's not good. I can just put it back again and you don't lose anything. Great. So rule number three, make it as narrow as possible, but please not only on the width, also on the height. Now uh, try to find out which is the highest. Well, that's this one. Okay, rule number three fulfilled. So very well, now that we have everything set up, we can export it, going here to file, export sprite sheets and you can just export it and make a save as and say something like jump corrected. So that's the best you can do at the moment. So don't forget there are three rules. Rule number one, the position of the character should be always on the same level. Uh, rule number two, your character needs to be symmetric with the collider box that you will add to him later. And rule number three is make it as narrow as possible. 
because it helps when you are using teleporters or anything like it. So, very well, next time I show you how to import those into the Corgi engine and make the character. See you next time, cheers!